Let's reboot everything. I'm so tired of them hitting the reboot key for everything. And it's genuinely annoying. I liked the era of DC before they did the new 52. Because I thought it was really great. And I really liked Rebirth. I really enjoyed the hopeful stories. Until they, Dan Didio decided to be a dickhead and just be like, you know, we need to change everything up. We need to get Tomachis off the Superman. Uh, Tom King canceled the wedding. We don't need it. Uh, let's just make everything so moody and bitchy as possible. Because that's the demographic we need to go after. And that's the audience that we need. The bitchy, moody, emo crowd. And I'm fucking tired of it. I'm tired of the whole idea of like, we need to reboot Batman. And bring in a new Batman. Forget Bruce Wayne. We don't need it. It is dumb. It's not going to work. And you're bringing in a guy who actually wrote a good Bruce Wayne Catwoman detective comics run. He had a good run. He knew how to get the family dynamic thing work. And that's what people really want. Is the Bat family stories. They want that. They don't want a new Batman. It isn't going to work. And if you really want to try to get people to buy the books and get everybody on board, is to really write a family dynamic story. Write a good adventure story. Write a good Gotham story. Enough with the reboots. I mean, with Superman... I don't know what to tell you. I haven't read Superman in a while. And Wonder Woman, same thing. <clears throat> but if there was ever another book I would buy from DC, it would be Justice League. And I really like to read a good Justice League book. Even though I hold the New Frontier as that higher quality, great book, which it is. How great it is. It's, it's a really good book. The reason why I liked it was it kind of went to the, like the golden silver age era of comics which were really fun to read and this whole idea of every DC character has to be like Batman that they have to be dark they have to be gritty they have to be moody I'm sorry I don't want to read a Flash book where the Flash is being moody and bitchy I'm not saying Batman's moody and bitchy, but when it comes to the Flash trying to be moody, he's more bitchy than anything. The Flash TV show, case in point. I don't want to read a comic book where Superman is questioning Lois of infidelity. I know as much as Brian Michael Bendis loves watching his soap operas and being like, Oh no, Sandra cheated on Andrew. I need to put that in Superman, by the way. I don't want to read that. I don't want to read One Life to Live in Superman. I don't want to read it. I sure as hell didn't want to read it in Batman. And I'm happy that Batman sales fell so badly that Tom King was put in the hot seat of being like, You need to fix this shit. So... When it comes to comics, go back to the Golden Age era. Look at the Silver Age era. Look at the Denny O'Neill era of Batman. Go back to that era. Go back to a good classic balance of, between Bruce Wayne and Batman. For the love of God, don't make it a soap opera. If I want to watch a soap opera of Batman, I put on the fourth season of Gotham. <laughs> so, 
that's kind of my rant. And do I think this whole 5G thing of a next generation is going to work? Hell no. It's never going to work. People aren't going to be like, Luke Fox Batman. People aren't going to reach and grab it. They're going to be like, fuck this. That's what I'm going to do. Like, if I ever had to see that in a comic book store, I'm going to be like, fuck this. I ain't buying it. I have no problems of not buying comic books. I did it before when Tom King kept doing this whole emo, emotional Bruce Wayne thing. It's like, if I want to be depressed, I'd turn on the news. And do if I want to be insulted by people being like, you're racist for not buying the Luke Fox Batman. Fuck you. I ain't buying it. I am not going to buy a Batman book that you've changed my favorite character and you got rid of him. You've done it with Marvel. Look at Marvel. Marvel did it with Iron Man. You know when people saw... The Avengers. They went to a comic book store. And they had to call me. And be like. What happened to Tony Stark? And I'm like. They replaced him. with Who the hell is Riri Williams? They got rid of him. Because of diversity and things. Well this is a bunch of shit. Do you know any good Iron Man books? I had to explain to my cousins. I literally... It was like, okay, I'll text you every good story. So they had to like go to Barnes & Noble to go find some good fucking Iron Man books. Because they didn't know who the hell Riri Williams is. They didn't even like Miles Morales' Spider-Man. You know why? <clears throat> it's because they don't like it. They want to read the Peter Parker Spider-Man. They want to read Thor. Not Lady Thor. They don't want to read books where you change the main characters to something they're not and expect people to buy it. Sorry, I had to burp. (laughs) Because once I get ranting, I, I had to burp. I don't know why. It's weird. But people don't want to read any of these books. I'm not saying Miles Morales is a terrible character. But when you think of Spider-Man, you think of Peter Parker. When you think of Batman, you think of Bruce Wayne. Diversity does sell, but when you force it to the point of being like, if you don't buy this fucking book, you are a racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, Islamophobic piece of shit. Nobody's not going to buy it. Nobody does not want to be insulted because they don't want to buy your book. People are not going to be shamed or blamed for sales. Marvel did it. They blamed people for low sales. But in reality, they did it to themselves. And you know what they did afterwards to get sales boosting? Is they sent more books and they refused refunds to stores that don't want them. I'm not making this up. I've seen more Marvel books on shelves, and they are the same number books with different variant covers. I've seen Secret Wars on shelves, and they did not sell one damn book. And you know who affected the most out of it? The stores. It affected them because they had to pay for it. And they, did get, and they did not get any money out of those books. And all these people who are like, we need diversity. We need representation of characters in our books. They don't buy the books. They basically get on Twitter or you know, Tumblr or whatever the fuck people get on. And they just bitch, complain, moan, whine, and cry. That they don't feel represented in comics. And once DC or Marvel be like, we are doing this for you. 
They don't buy the books. And, <laughs> and it's really funny how some writers and artists who are like, you know, I don't get hired by Marvel. You know what? They're just racist. They're sexist. They're homophobic. They're transphobic. And Marvel turns around and hires them. DC did it. They they fucking hired Bendis and um, what's her name? Who's now writing Aquaman? And they're just not that talented. Bendis writes the most boring, basic Superman, and he couldn't even write fucking Damian Wainwright. He wrote Damian in the new, you know, recent Superman book as this preteen nine-year-old. And he eats hot dogs. And it's like, he doesn't even fucking respect the continuity of knowing that Damien's a vegetarian or vegan. He doesn't eat meat because he has a cow, a bat cow, who he saved from being killed. I know that's like the dumbest thing, but it's like the small details matter. <sighs> kind of on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> but this whole 5G introducing new characters to fans isn't going to sell. And I know that Freddie Prince Jr. once said, like, Star Wars didn't age with older audiences. It, it's young and youthful. It's like, you know what? Fuck you. And the people like you. People like old things. You know why? Because they're better. New heroes don't relate to the people that buy comics. If you want to write new heroes and make them relatable, write them for kids' books. Except Squirrel Girl. She scares the shit out of everybody. But, you know... I'm not one of those people who buy those books, but this whole idea of heroes like Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne being gone is going to fail. It's going to fail. And I honestly believe that this whole thing, this 5G plan, is going to fail like New 52. Because changing up continuity, changing up these characters, doesn't work. It worked for Marvel for the ultimate Marvel Universe. It's because it was a separate world from the main continuity world. And DC, of course, doesn't want to do that. They don't want to create another Earth because, well, the button storyline, they kind of destroyed the Earth too. But <laughs> this whole thing just doesn't fit. And I really like the Earth too, like Thomas Wayne Batman, a black Superman, Wonder Woman and Aquaman being fucking crazy people who are at war with each other which was interesting <laughs> but this whole world you know this whole new universe in the continuity the main world of DC just doesn't work it isn't really going to work they know it I know it I'm sure some people who are listening know it, but I can't wait to see this whole idea of theirs just blow up in their face. So anyway. We're going to talk about something that's really funny and interesting. They recently cast a Catwoman for the upcoming Batman film. Aquaman.